It's not getting any better. And the nightmares, you're still having them? Every night. Are you taking the Seroquel that I prescribed? Yes. You notice any changes in the dreams since the medication? It's helped with anxiety, but not with the nightmares. Daniel thinks the meds are turning me into a zombie. Well, outside of the fact you're not sleeping, how are you feeling? Cold. Lonely. I feel very alone. And what about Daniel? We barely speak anymore. But I understand I'm not bad. Well, what do you mean? When he lost his little girl. How else would he act? Rachel, it's very important that the two of you learn to communicate with one another. No one can truly understand the way that both of you feel. You need each other. You need each other now more than ever before. Let's try some relaxation. Get comfortable. Put your head back. Close your eyes. That's it. Breathe deeply. Relax. Take it all in. Big smile. There she is. <laughs> you waved to me? You waved. Rachel, I want to focus on the nightmares you've been having. You can dream about your husband. You can dream about your daughter. That's all natural. But you said you were having nightmares about your mother-in-law. No, why is she on your mind? This past year with her was really hard. Daniel loved her so much. But when she got dementia, things changed. She changed. And Daniel didn't want to put her in a home, so we talked about it and decided it would be best if, if she moved in with us. It wasn't bad at first. Elizabeth loved having her grandmother around, and of course Daniel was happy. But it didn't last long. Her condition got so bad that we actually had to lock her in a room. She was just too sick. She was a danger to herself. That's when she started to forget who we were. Everyone except Daniel. And then she got violent.
It got so bad. I couldn't take it anymore. I was scared of her. I was scared for Elizabeth. It was a tough decision, but Daniel finally agreed that it would be best if she moved in to nursing home. Two months after that, she passed away. Daniel took it really hard. I don't think he ever got over the decision to put her in a home. He was convinced it's what killed her. What are you doing? Nothing. I... I don't know. It's late. Go to bed. I'm gonna take a shower.
I saw her again last night. God damn it, Rachel! Enough! I just... I can't. Enough. <laughs> what are you doing? Nothing. Do you even know what you're doing with that thing? Of course I do. I'm a professional. Oh, right, right. But, um, question. What's this button do? No, no, wait. And we're back. Uh, just so everybody knows, my wife does not, in fact, know what she's doing. Um, so today's kind of a big day. You want to tell the... No, I'll, I'll tell. We just found out that we're having a little girl. I'm going to be a father. Who knew? Um. Uh, anything you'd like to say to the baby? Well... First of all, we can't wait to see you. And second, I'm gonna apologize in advance for your daddy being such a goof. Aw, oh, thanks, sweetheart. <laughs> you can't come soon enough. I love you. I love you too. Rachel. We have to talk about your daughter. We have to talk about the decision to take her off life support. Can we talk about that? I think about every second of every day. It was the worst decision I've ever had to make in my life. You and Daniel made that decision together. No. No. Daniel never made those choices because he wanted to. He made those choices because of me. No, he, he never wanted to put his mother into a home and he never wanted to take his daughter off life support. I took away the two people that he loved most in his life. I killed my baby. Dan. Dan? Decided to join us. Sleepyhead mommy. Yep, she's a sleepyhead.
Asphyxia, venous occlusion, arterial occlusion, flaccid quadriplegia with no response to stimulus, including deep pain. The EEG shows residual and persistent brain injury. Dan. Daniel. What? The damage was so severe. I mean, she... She might be here for two weeks, she might be here for two months, two years, but she's not, she's not coming out of the coma. And? What I'm saying is that you should start thinking about moving on with your life. Her mind is lost, Dan, and the only thing keeping her alive are those machines. I'm sorry, Daniel, she's left you. You don't understand. She's the strong one. I should have listened more. After Lizzie's accident, Rachel tried so hard to hold it all together. I just shut down. Then when it came time to deal with Lizzie's situation, Rachel was alone. Should have been there. Should have seen this coming. Let her go, Dan. It's the right thing to do. The right thing to do? They told us with Lizzie it was the right thing to do. And letting her go caused the strongest person I know to try and take her own life. I won't do that again. Never again. Rachel. 